So all the painting is complete on these custom Chicago Bears electric football figures. Uh, save that, of course, for the final touch-ups uh, that I do once uh, everything is ready to finalize. I'll give them one more uh, look and touch up anything that needs it before I apply the, uh, the uh, final uh, clear coat of gloss acrylic paint. So before we uh, mount the uh, camera on the tripod here, we'll just give these uh, a little glancing look here and see how the leg stripes look. We'll turn these all around. Um, <laughs> can't even see it on the backers from this angle. But uh, you're looking at, you can't see it on the sprinters either. Or the uh, runners. Yeah, that looks good on the sprinters. So what I'm going to do is one at a time just flip them around here. So you can see the other side here. That is a, um, a painted orange stripe on the legs. That I did with a toothpick and uh, it's detailed with a sharpie pen on either side blue sharpie which uh, looks really good against that orange um, it's not a dark blue it's just a blue and uh, you know from this distance I think one could argue these look kind of like a water slide decal and uh, so what we'll do is we'll mount the camera here on the tripod and then we'll look at these up close and you'll see that no these don't look like water slide decals these were hand painted and drawn on here and uh that's uh i won't pretend like each one of them was incredibly easy because you know some of them were fiddly with arms hanging down in the way and stuff we'll look at that so allow me to um oh. Get back on my feet here. I'll pause the camera for a moment and we'll uh, look at these one by one. All right, we're ready to look at these now. So again, I used the toothpick to paint the orange stripe. Didn't worry about uh, the smoothness of the stripe because I knew I was going to be drawing blue stripes around it with a Sharpie pen. And up close, it's going to be painfully obvious that... Uh, I drew those on, uh, not always as smoothly as possible, or as, as I'd liked to have happened. But, as you can see, that's really fine detail. We're looking at an inch and a half tall figurine here. And, uh, you know, I'm going to try not to be hypercritical of these for three reasons. Number one, I'm always too hypercritical of my achievements. Uh, number two, there's nothing I can do about it. And um, number three... My naked eyes without magnification says these look pretty damn good. Of course, when we look at any electric football figure up close, you're going to see uh, telltale signs that it's not a real uh, football player. It's, in fact, painted with and decorated with either decals or additional paint. So, uh, yeah, I'm not at all displeased with these. I said there, there will be areas of these that will require more paint, like, you know, the sides of the green base plates here. That needs some more paint on them. That rubs off when I'm uh, painting these. Probably the backs of the heels on most of these will require just a little more paint. Maybe the tops of the heads. Maybe some of the flesh tones on the hands and the tips of the fingers and stuff. That sort of thing. All right. You know, even from this distance. Wow. Wow. Um, All right, and the reason that I hand draw these uh, leg stripes on is because um, I don't have a lot of success with the water slide decal leg stripes for Fab Five figures. Very fiddly, very, they don't look that good to me when I put them on. Uh, I'm much more satisfied with this, doing it freehand. And I do realize that not everyone can do it that way. And it's a surprise that as shaky as my hands can be that, that I achieved this. But, uh, yeah, that look, I think it looks good. I mean, when I watch this on playback, I'll probably start second-guessing myself and say, oh, my God, these look like crap. But, again, um, with a toothpick and a Sharpie pen, it's, it's going to be uh, very tough to uh, do any better than this. 
frankly, I even now, I think that looks pretty good. Now, the, the lineman figures, very easy to do this because no arms or hands in the way. But that's not going to be the case on just about every other type of figure here. Here's a backer figure. And uh, I'm following the, the seam uh, that's actually in the, in the, uh, the figure. Uh, it, you might make the case that this should have curved around more and made more of an S shape, but that's the seam on that side of the figure. Now, it sort of naturally happens over here. That was fiddly right there, folks. Getting the Sharpie pen in there. And, uh, yeah, it looks like uh, another coat of orange paint would have not been remiss on the stripe. But, uh, had I done so, I'd have probably, uh, uh, gone out, out of the line, so to speak. And, uh, would have had to have spent some time touching it up. Okay, but even from there, I mean, you may say, nope, that's not right. It needs to do this and then that. Well, go look at the seam on a backer figure on that side. That's how it's done. All right. Next. Yeah. I feel like I did a little better job on this one, but it's still following that same seam line. And of course, yeah, you get this close. You can tell that that's a Sharpie pen. Oh. Look there, I've got some of the orange paint from the striping on the... Uh, so yeah, there's still some touch-up to be done on these. Quite a bit. Uh, looks like I already did some touch-up on this one with some white paint there, probably because the ink was a little... went out a little too far on that one. Again... Kind of tough to get in there between the arm and the, the pants, but I did it. So I have to be sure to... I might even do that tonight. Now, some of this is dust. You know, these have been out for... I don't even know how many months at this point I've been working on these. Of course, you know, everything went off rails there in July. End of July and in August. I planned to have these finished by then, but that didn't happen. Now we'll move on to the all-purpose figures. Now, the, the mold seam is a little more natural to the shape of the pants there. Yeah. Okay. Not too difficult over here, just on the inner edge there. It was, you know, because the, the pin had to rest up against the, uh, the arm. Okay. What's next on these figures? Well, I think I'll tackle the tights next. I'm going to try three stripes all the way around the, the tights. Blue stripes with the Sharpie pen. Provided that Sharpie pen doesn't crap out on me. Uh, run out of ink, so to speak. Um, if it does, dead in the water until I go get another blue Sharpie pen. Um, oh, that one looks pretty good, doesn't it? Ooh, yeah. Ironically, this is one I felt like I rushed too quickly with my uh, pen strokes and my brush or my toothpick strokes, but that might be a little less in there. Yeah, yeah there's the yeah, from this angle, it looks like I didn't get any of, of the blue stripe down there on the knee, but from this angle, you can see, yes, I certainly did. Sort of an optical illusion on these, and then once the the, the tights are are drawn on there. Then I'll do the shoulder stripes. I'm hoping to get three shoulder stripes, and I'm not going to try to wrap it all the way around the arms. Uh, you know, just just like with a decal, just around it, I'm hoping to leave enough room for the uh, jersey numbers. That was challenging, and actually that looks pretty daggum good. Um, sometimes you just had to have some blind faith. That was, yeah, I, I don't, I just couldn't get the, the tip of the pin up any higher than that. Right there, still looks good. Still looks good to me. You know, even from here, yeah, that looks very good. If it'll focus, but then, you know, as we get closer, as we get closer and closer, you can see that that's not a decal. That is, in fact, uh, painted and drawn on there.
Okay, here's the other sprinter. Maybe the orange stripe is a little thicker on that one, and that's okay. I didn't want to get the orange stripe too thick on these. This isn't technically a color rush uh, uniform. This is a throwback, so... Yeah. yeah. I did the very best I could right there. And, uh, well, from any great distance, it looks fine. Couldn't... You know what? I think I could probably get all the way up to the top of the pants on that one. I hope I remember to go back and do that. Okay. This is why I do this right here, folks, so even I can can see things that need to be corrected. Okay. Now, possibly the most challenging of all is, is the uh, runner figures. Uh, not this arm. I mean, not this side. This was super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Um... Looks quite good. It's, you know, this getting up there around that fist. Uh, sometimes you just had to close your eyes and, and and hope everything went according to plan. And generally it did. I just don't think I can get that up any higher there. Could you take a toothpick and, and move that up? You could, and it might work splendidly, and it might not. So I may not risk it. Um, I know he who dares wins, but... I don't want to be uh, dishonest and claim that I'm not really ready to be done with this project for many reasons, because I am. Um, I don't want to rush it. Again, I've said this before, don't rush your paint projects at the end just to get them done. Don't cut corners. Um, oh, that one's pretty good. Yeah, I did good on that one. And again, there's the... Yeah, it's there. It's just at certain angles you can't see all the blue lines on the uh, stripes. Well, yeah, again, inch and a half tall figure. That's quite some detail. And, uh, frankly, uh, they turned out better than I, I thought they would. Um, which is why I'm pretty pleased right now. Now, some of the artists in the community may be looking at these right now and say, oh, Those suck. Why are you talking these up like that's something impressive? Well... It is for me. It's incredibly impressive for me, uh, considering how shaky my hands can be sometimes and uh, uh, how very little experience I have at painting these figures. What, two years? It, I guess it was, it'll was. it be uh, two years in... No, it was two years in October or November. Well, it's November now, so... Yeah, two years. And uh, every project, I just keep improving a little more. Now, there's still plenty of opportunities to screw this up. Um, uh, something may go wrong uh, with the stripes on the, the tights or the, the shoulders. I'm not too worried about the shoulder stripes because I've done those before on my Away Team Bears figures, except this time we're, uh, instead of two stripes, we're going to try three. Um, and uh, at that point, we'll touch everything up. We'll see these one more time after that's all done. And we'll move on to the uh, clear coat at that point, then the, the jersey number decals, and then the... Uh, uh, face masks, and then we'll uh, look at them one more time, and then put them in these storage containers, and move on to the next project, which will be the Tennessee Volunteers. And again, this is all planned. This has all been part of the plan for two years now. Um, you know, I started with the Home Team Steelers, made a big old squad of Home Team Steelers, fifty-seven figures, including some Mean Thirteens, matched those numbered by number with some away team Steelers that were already halfway painted fr from the factory. They were rejects that the logos had been painted over, so I just repainted some logos on. We've seen me do that. We know how good I am at painting Steelers logos on these figures. Uh, that was the second project. Then the Chicago Bears away team, another large squad of 57, including some mean 13s. And then uh, I moved on to the... Um, uh, custom Color Rush Steelers uh, uniforms with the yellow jerseys, and those turned out beautifully. And uh, I was very, very happy with those. And uh, Then, before I started these chaps, um, I did a one-off of a, a Pittsburgh Steeler in a, a home uniform using a, a B-nut figure and um, some apple barrel paints rather than the uh, Tudor paints just to see how that worked out. Worked out great. Probably the best figure I've ever painted. And uh, 
it was a backer figure and now we're we putting the final touches here on these uh, throwback Chicago Bears uniforms that never really existed um, because um, the uh, the jersey numbers won't be white they will be uh, blue and they actually have orange trim you won't see the orange trim but it's gonna look great on these uniforms the blue jersey numbers on the front back and the shoulders along with the blue helmet and that blue trim on the stripe and the blue trim on the on the tights and on the uh, shoulder on the sleeves I think it's gonna look really really good as long as uh, uh, as long as with my sharpie pen uh, doesn't fail me and if it does I'm gonna have to uh, just pause till I can get out and get another sharpie pen uh, I, I don't want to try a different color sharpies. I have some other blues in the uh, in the uh, in the cup here that would, in a pinch, substitute. But then they would be different colors than what's already on there. And so, if that does happen, we'll just pause until we can we can rectify it. Uh, so there you go, folks. Um, it is possible to paint and detail your own uh, leg stripes without spending a lot of money on water slide de uh, decals. And uh, you don't have to have a lot of artistic ability or steady hands to do it. You just have to have some, uh, some confidence and um, some determination and, well, some stubbornness to, uh, to try to uh, save pennies and shillings, whatever you want to call them, uh, whenever possible. That's really my new ethos in electric football. Well, it always has been my ethos to try to do this at low cost, no matter how long it takes. And uh, but in with the case of uh, the leg stripes, uh, I'm better off personally painting them on rather than trying to use the decals because uh, my luck with the waterside decals is, is very poor uh, with leg stripes. So there we have it, and uh, I appreciate you watching this one. Hope this is helpful. And I'll talk to you again real soon. Take care.